his head uh, above the base of the skull uh, contained a large cavity, which appeared to be an ugly wound. This whole section of his head was gone, and this was the, the section that would have been towards the school book, book here. This part of his uh, head was blown away and the brains were exposed. He was still tripping quite a bit of blood from the wound in the back of his head.
the right sign of his head. The location of the head wound is key evidence. Since a bullet almost always makes a small wound when it enters and a large wound when it exits, a big wound at the back of JFK's head would indicate a shot from the front and more than one shooter. Most of the doctors and nurses who treated the president at Parkland did see a large wound at the rear of the head. Dr. Robert McClelland. It was in the right back part of the head, very large. Nurse Audrey Bell. You know, there was a massive wound at the back of his head. Dr. Charles Carrico. There was a, uh, a, a large, uh, quite a large defect about here on his, on his skull. Dr. Ronald Jones. Well, my impression was that, that there was a wound in, in this area of the head, right in, right in this area. But six of the Dallas doctors testified they saw a part of the brain called the cerebellum protruding from the president's head wound. The cerebellum is located at the extreme back of the head. And a portion of the cerebellum fell out onto the table as we were doing the, uh, the tracheostomy. It did. Mm -hmm. So the wound was very far back here. Right. That's one of my more vivid memories, I would say, of the whole thing. Was that was particularly uh, grim to see that portion of the brain ooze out of the wound as I sat there looking at it, stood there looking at it. So that stays with you pretty, pretty much. But now, some of the Dallas doctors, like Marion Jenkins, are changing their stories. As late as 1977, Jenkins was saying he had seen the cerebellum protruding from JFK's head wound, meaning the wound was far to the rear. But recently, Jenkins had his first look at the official photos and x-rays. Well, after looking at photo photographs, some made from this angle, looking down at the top of the head, it did look like cerebellum. It still looks like it, but it's obviously not. I'm not trying to defend it. I've made an error, and I have been, but I say I make errors. I call my kids the wrong names. The Dallas doctor's recollections about an exit wound in the back of the president's head are confirmed by witnesses at the Bethesda Hospital autopsy. I mean, a big gaping hole in the back of the head. Floyd Reby, a photographer on duty, talked with Wayne Friedman. So it's like somebody put a piece of dynamite in a tin can and light it off. There was nothing there. Open area all the way across into the rear of the, the brain like that. 
from the top of the head almost back to the near the base of the skull. You could see where that part was gone. So eyewitnesses in Dallas and Bethesda describe a wound extending all the way to the back of the head. But official autopsy photos and x-rays move the wound all the way to the front of the head. The photos show the back of the head with hair and scalp intact. No large wound. The x-rays show a large wound extending to the forehead. Certainly I can tell you that the wound was not here. There was no damage to the face uh, that was visible. What about the official photos and x-rays? We showed them to the three eyewitnesses to JFK's autopsy. Photos and x-rays not available to the public since the assassination, but recently obtained by the press. Gerald Custer took the x-rays that night. Is this the x-ray picture that you took, and is this the wound that you saw on the president? This area here mm -hmm. was gone. Not this area? Not this area. Floyd Reby assisted with the autopsy photos. The two pictures that I've seen that you showed me that are supposedly from the archives are not what I saw that night. Now, I don't know where those pictures came from. The back of the head looked like that? What did the back no, of the head look like? It had a big hole in it. This whole area was gone. Does that look like what you saw? No, no, it doesn't look like what I saw. This, Some this would be... Uh, a lesser of a wound than what I saw. I saw a, a lot worse wound uh, that extended way back into this area here. Was the president's hair and scalp like that? No. What was it like? This part of the head was gone. There was no scalp there. Are you telling me that this is not? I don't believe so. You, you don't think this is an no. honest-to-God no. autopsy photo? No, I don't. What do you think it is? I don't know. It's being phonied someplace. It's make-believe. To me, it's rather obvious that the president had been struck before Governor Conley was wounded because the president was placing his hand up to his throat. And at that time, the uh, governor was showing no signs of any distress that he had been struck in any way. It was a f just a few frames later that uh, he uh, obviously had been wounded and showed signs that he was in pain. The commission claimed that Governor Conley had simply suffered a delayed reaction to his wounds. Dr. Robert Shaw was the attending surgeon at Parkland Hospital who operated on the governor. I would disagree because I don't think that there would be a delayed action to a wound uh, that was as massive as the wound he received of his chest. And I'm also influenced by what Nellie Conley said. She said that her husband was struck and reared up like a wounded animal before she heard the bullet, I mean, heard the shot that had been fired. So this would indicate uh, that uh, his reaction was almost immediate. This bullet is too pristine for a bullet that had uh, shattered a rib and also badly shattered the radius, which is a good strong bone uh, I am sure that the bullet that inflicted these wounds on Governor Conley was fragmented much more than this bullet shows this is the bullet could it look like this after it went through Kennedy's neck and then struck the governor the surgeon who operated on Governor Conley's chest wounds at Parkland Hospital was Dr. Robert Shaw the bullet struck lateral to the shoulder blade, stripped out approximately 10 centimeters of the fifth rib, driving fragments of the rib into his chest, went on and struck his, the radius bone of his lower arm at this point, and a small fragment of bullet entered the inner aspect of the lower left thigh. I have never seen a bullet that had caused as much bony damage 
as you found in the case of Governor Connolly, remain as a pristine bullet. But looking at the wounds, Dr. Shaw disagrees. I couldn't quite understand why a bullet going through the president's neck, coming from the right and above, exiting out through his throat, would then zig and zag to strike the governor who was sitting directly in front of the president. It would seem to me that that bullet would have struck the governor in the left side of his chest rather than the right side of his chest. It looked small and round, like an entry wound, instead of larger, like an exit wound could uh, often look. Had surgery been done in Dallas? No, there was no surgery done on the president's head. The president was only treated in the trauma room, in the emergency room. I could see the president's uh, head wound quite well, and um, I was probably looking into a wound that was on the lateral or the side part of the head and the back part of the head. Uh, it would be this portion of the head right here. As I remember, it's like this. I, I would have to say, uh, honestly, and looking at these photos, they're pretty much as I remember President Kennedy at the time, except for that little incision that seems to be coming down in the parietal area. Uh, on looking at the photographs, I could envision that an incision might have been made in order to pull the scalp back to expose this bone to make a photograph of that area. Perhaps this explains the surgery to the head area the FBI mentioned. I find no discrepancy between the wounds as they're shown very vividly in these photographs and what I remember very vividly. It was a very large but do the doctor's assertions that they saw no altered wounds clear up the issue? The drawings suggest what many of the photos examined by the doctors in Nova show a large wound about this size and location. But what about this photo, which shows what appears to be only a small entry wound in the back of Kennedy's head? Dr. McClellan speculates. The pathologist has taken this loose piece of scalp, which is hanging back this way in most of the pictures, exposing this large wound, and has pulled the scalp forward to take a picture, naturally, the scalp appears to be in its normal state, and there doesn't seem to be any sort of wound in the area where I had drawn the picture that showed this large hole. But doesn't this large wound suggest a shot from the front, as Lifton argues? This drawing made for Congress suggests how a small rear entry wound could have created the large wound. Finally, if the large wound was really in this part of the head, why did most of the doctors note back in 1963 that they had seen a specific part of the brain called the cerebellum? I did say cerebellum in my first official report. And the cerebellum ordinarily is in a posterior part. And here I knew very well that the wound was more anterior than that, but there was a portion of the brain that looked like it had a stalk and it was convoluted to look like uh, what I thought was cerebellum. I said that I thought perhaps part of the cerebellum was missing. Former Senator John Sherman Cooper is the first member of the Warren Commission to agree to talk on television about what went on inside the deliberations. Yes, there were disagreements. Uh, I think the most uh, serious, well, one of the one that comes to me the most vividly, of course, was a question of whether or not the first shot went through President Kennedy and then through Governor Connolly, who was sitting on the jump seat in front of him. I heard Governor Connolly testify very strongly that uh, he was not struck with the same bullet. And 
I could not convince myself that the same bullet uh, struck Bolson, although uh, we had experts who said it could. And you mean that you yourself didn't weren't convinced about the single bullet theory? Which no, I wasn't convinced by it. Neither was Senator Russell. Just before he died in 1971, Senator Russell caused the first cracks in the Warren Commission's Gibraltar of factual literature. Russell said publicly, I think someone else worked with Lee Harvey Oswald. Dallas Police Chief Jesse Curry was in the fatal motorcade just ahead of the president and cannot accept the Warren Commission view that the only shot came from behind. I think there's a possibility that one could have come from, the, from in front of us. We were never, we've never been able to prove that. But just in my mind, and by the uh, direction of the, of the blood and brain from the president from one of the shots, it, j it would just seem that uh, it ha would have to be fired from the front rather than behind. I can't say that I would, could swear that I believe there was one man and one man alone. I think that there's a possibility there could have been another man. Jesse Curry was Dallas police chief at the time of the assassination. Mrs. Kennedy was coming out on the back of the trunk of the car. It appeared to me that she was attempting to retrieve part of his head that had been blown off. By the time I got there, two more shots had been fired, and he had been hit in the head. When I slipped, when I first tried to get up on the presidential car, it took me four or five steps more in order to get up there. And in that time, Mrs. Kennedy was out on top of the trunk attempting to grasp part of the president's head that had been blown off and had fallen into the street. I had to run three or four more steps before I could get out. By that time, Mrs. Kennedy had come out onto the trunk and was seeming, it appeared to me to be searching for something or trying to retrieve something. But I got up on the back of the car and placed her back in the seat president at that time has slipped down into her lap and I could see the back of his head and there was a gaping hole above his right ear about the size of my palm and there was white brain matter and red blood throughout the entire car. I could see into the skull, there was a hole in his skull and you could see that part of the brain was gone, it wasn't even there. At Parkland Hospital, Dr. Malcolm Perry, assistant professor of surgery at Southwestern Medical School, was on duty when the mortally wounded president was brought to the emergency room. But there was a neck wound anteriorly and a large wound in his head in the right posterior area. But there was a neck wound anteriorly and a large wound in his head in the right 
clearly in a large in his head in the right posterior area. Okay, so you think it's an eczema, but as far as the back of the head, that, that appeared to be gone to you? or Yeah, it was gone. Oh, okay. Where? Where? Here? No, right back. That's when yeah. I pick it, yeah, that's all thing here that I can feel it right there. And the back, right almost in the middle of the back of the head, mm -hmm. just to the side of the head. Wow. so close to the president that following the uh, three shots, uh, his uh, uniform was spattered with blood. As I told you. But when they took off the sheep, what did you see? As far as the hole, I, I know saw George a Michael's pretty account. large hole in the back of his head. Basically where on your head? Well, we did this the other day, and we'll do it again. Right about in this section here. Okay. With probably, oh, there was matting, there was pieces of bone tissue, there was pieces of skull. Oh, and there was, it was a pre I had no way to do it, because I did not have a, uh, you know, okay. like a farmer at the time. I couldn't say that. The size no. of an orange? Oh, I would say a little bit bigger than an orange. Mm -hmm. The official autopsy report, I think, put it at around six inches at the largest diameter. That was Hume's. That's the, the autopsy report that I have. Um, I would not debate that. If he said that, fine. Then I would say that that's pretty... Now, pretty the president, now, the president's brain, from mm -hmm. what you saw, obviously it was still in the cranium. There was a portion of the brain. Well, now wait a minute. Roughly how, how much? Yeah. We've discussed this in the past. No, but I don't know exactly how much. I do know that the X-rays indicate there was a brain in there. I right. do know I saw a brain in there. Not a total brain. It was a pretty mishmash piece of pulp. But did with you all see them take it out? Yes. Well, with all respect. Did you see them take out the brain? Wait a minute. I saw them talk out what remained in the area there. Okay. In other words, you scooped it out. There was no cutting of the, the main thing, as I understand, which is normally done. No. Doctors and nurses try frantically to save her 46-year-old husband's life in trauma room one. It really didn't do an awful lot. I was, I was convinced in my own mind that he wasn't going to make it. Right here. It was all gone. Husband's life in trauma room one. It really didn't do an awful lot. The Warren Commission ignored the film evidence of a shot from the front. They were also selective in their choice of eyewitness testimony. Two members of the Willis family told them of hearing shots fired from behind the president's car. However, other vital evidence they tried to offer went unrecorded. The implication was persuading, yes ma'am, because uh, all they wanted to know was three shots that, that probably came from the depository building which I never have doubted. That's about all they wanted to know. That about all got into the Warren Commission. I heard three loud shots from the Texas Depository. The headshot seemed to come from the right front. It seemed to strike him here, and uh, his head went back, and it, all of the brain matter went out the back of the head. It was like a red halo, a red circle with bright matter in the middle of it. It just went like that. It, it was a, a terrible time. You cannot imagine seeing this. You, you knew it happened, but you didn't want to believe it. The particular headshot must have come from another direction besides behind him because the back of his head blew off and it doesn't make sense to be hit from the rear and still have your face intact. So he must have been hit from another position, you know, possibly, you know, in the front or over to the side. I, I really don't know where but the back of his head blew off. So I am very dead certain at least one shot, including the one that took the president's skull off, had to come from the right front. And I'll stand by that to my death, over my mother's grave. The doctors at Parkland Hospital who tended the president minutes after the assassination also saw a head wound compatible with a shot from the front. I can see that he had a large, uh, about seven centimeter opening in the right occipital parietal area. And considerable portion of the brain was missing there and uh, the occipital cortex, the back portion of the brain was lying down near the opening of the wound and blood was trickling out. Almost a fifth or perhaps even a quarter of the right back part of the head in this area here had been blasted out along with probably most of the brain tissue in that area. Dr. Crenshaw says they're wrong. 
the bullet struck about where and passed about where? From here right. through. And taking out the... The back or the occipital part. The back of your head. This was gone uh, in our view, and we, that's the reason we could see the cerebellum. Had the bullet come from the back, uh, what would have been the difference? It in the would bullet? have been much different. It would have gone a little more anterior and be a bigger blaster. Right. The second wound? The second wound was here in the throat, right above the necktie. It was a small opening, very small, three to five millimeters, about the size of your little finger. In a slow motion study of the film, President Kennedy grabs his throat with both hands, reacting, Crenshaw believes, as if he is shot from the front. At first, most of the doctors working on the president believe the small neck wound they observed to be an entry wound from the front. But a later autopsy from Bethesda Naval Hospital showed another previously undetected wound in the back, which the Dallas medical team had not found. This discovery made the Parkland doctors less certain in their initial conclusion that the shots came from the front. Dr. Charles Baxter, a senior member of the surgical team, believes it's impossible to tell the direction. Could it have been a bullet wound that came from the front? Oh, I think it could have, as well as from behind. Because the wound in the back and the wound in the front were essentially the same in appearance, both of them look like entry wounds. Mm. Uh, bullets, as they go in, begin to tumble, spin, and when they come out, they explode, so that the exit wound is always much larger and a lot more tissue damage. So what would appear clinically as an entry wound became question mark. Right. And that's the way it still stays today in my mind. Compounding the mystery is this photograph of the government's autopsy, showing a gaping wound in the president's neck. A tracheostomy incision was done at Parkland over the site of the bullet wound. Crenshaw says someone tampered with that wound after he last saw Kennedy's body, making it larger to resemble a bullet exit wound. Look, this is the size of the tracheostomy tube. Mm -hmm. Incision was made and then placed in. This large part, this flange, stays outside. So it was a small wound about the size of the, the instrument uh, that uh, you right. saw. An inch to an inch and a half maximum. This wound, and described in the Warren Commission, was almost three inches wide. Double the size. Eh? Double. Is it possible that the doctor uh, working to put this in what may have been already a bullet wound uh, made the incision too large? Oh, no. No, Perry was an artist with the blade. He was one of the best trained technical surgeons. But it seems almost incomprehensible that a team of highly intelligent, highly trained doctors could be standing over the President of the United States and see wounds that you say came from the front, and yet the official government story is it came from the back, and wait this long to break the silence. Intimidation, fear.